I'm Ray Motor from ACG, and welcome to another edition of the Hot Seat. Alcatel is about to make an announcement in the core space. Joining us today is Basil Alwan, who's president of Alcatel's IPD group. Basil, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. And I appreciate you joining the Hot Seat. Definitely. As we do in the Hot Seat, we'd like to get right to the point. Yep. Now, if we look at this duopoly regarding the core, mm -hmm. it's, it's been a lot of smart people that really try to get into the core. I mean, I could think of a dozen off Absolutely. the top of my head. Why are you getting into this smart thing and why now? It's a great question, actually, because back in, the, back in 2000, there was probably 10 plus router startups, core router startups, mm -hmm. and they all had a bit of a tough time. You know, our view has been, uh, you know, we've been building routing, routing platforms here for quite a while. And we've always looked at the core market and said, when is the right time for us to enter the core? And, and our, our view was, let's, let's enter the core when we see an opportunity to add some real value. Okay. And we see the core changing uh, mm -hmm. more than it has in the past. The big change that's going on in the core is that uh, service providers are moving more and more resources to metros mm -hmm. by necessity. So you've got data centers, huge data centers coming online. You've got video caching. Over time, uh, there's, there's this growth of metro cores. So it's not one core anymore. There's, the, there's a super aggregated IP core. Mm -hmm. And there's also all these metro cores that are growing. And the market, so the, so the, so the uh, definition of core is changing. Mm -hmm. The opportunity is to build a platform that can address that change. Mm -hmm. And that implies a, a platform that has not only, of course, the raw speed, right. the raw capacity, but also some real flexibility. Right, I see. Now, what innovation are you bringing to this area? And, and on top of that, I mean, as, as you know, there's been two incumbents in that particular area. What innovation are you doing? And, and I'm hearing a lot of talk, you know, there's a lot of publicity regarding the LSR, right. which has been resonating real well last year. That's right. How are you planning to address that particular need right now? Right, so it starts with the market. So like I said, the market we see, we see the market changing a bit. Um, uh, the idea of a super core, or a, a LSR only core, is, uh, is an idea that's been around for a long time. And the idea has been, simply put, um, if we do a less functional but higher density platform for the super core, uh, that's just doing label switching, we can get better density, lower costs, better power efficiency. But um, you know, we've come to market on the edge, with, and, and our, our technology has been dri driven by around network processor sold. So what we've been doing is writing the technology curve of network processors. Okay. Network processors are fundamentally different. They give you complete flexibility in the forwarding plan. With 40 nanometer, uh, you know, and the right designs, we've been able to actually hit better density, mm -hmm. better cost, better power, sure. but still have a platform that can do not only LSR, can act as an LSR for a super core, mm -hmm. but the same exact platform, not different blades, the same blades, mm -hmm. can also be full IP routing, so they can be an LER. They can also do some data center interconnect and some, and some basic infrastructure VPNs, sure. but all at speeds that are even higher mm -hmm. than the fastest LSR only code that's okay. on the market. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I think because it's 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 an idea where core networks haven't changed much over the last few right. years, so it's a, it's an interesting way to look at it. Now, uh, I noticed in talking to some carriers, some like the blue car and like the green car from an architectural perspective, right. and it seems that the concept of even selling is no longer selling a router anymore. Right. It's selling a platform, selling a solution. Absolutely. What architecture are you going with? I hear multi-chassis, standalone. What makes sense for you? That's right. That's right. So we're you know we're announcing a platform today that is that is can both operate as standalone. Mm -hmm. In a standalone mode, it's a uh, you know 32 tera half duplex math mm -hmm. or 16 tera real math. Okay. So we'll, uh, it's 160 100 gig ports in a single router. Okay. Single router. Single router. Okay. So um, this is incredible density. It's highest density platform in the industry. The platform can also be used in a multi-chassis. Okay. So we have it's a family of products. Mm -hmm. It includes that the, the big one, the XRS40, which is 160. And there's the XRS20, mm -hmm. which has uh, uh, 20, uh, 80 100 gig ports, right. and then we have the XR6, XR16C, XSR16C, which gives us a bit of granularity in the family. Right. Okay. It's a nice family of products. The XRS20 and the XRS40 can either operate standalone, mm -hmm. or they can be built into a multi-chassis. Right. So it gives our customers the ability to have the best density right. in a standalone on a standalone basis, but also build multi jazz right. areas. Another thing we want to talk about is distraction. Right. And what I mean by distraction is you've been very successful in the edge. Right. I think correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you had about about two billion dollars right. record, record, uh, last right year in uh, revenue. So you've had that success. Do you feel that this potentially could be a distraction and you're spreading your you and your staff too thin? 
Yeah, well, it's a great question because um, you got to be really careful. We've mm -hmm. been very systematic about uh, moving into adjacent areas. Mm -hmm. Start at the edge, uh, really the business edge, mm -hmm. and then we move to consumer edge, uh, mobile uh, aggregation, mobile backhaul, mobile mm -hmm. edge. But we've been doing that as we've grown our team. <laughs> so we certainly have the capacity to grow and, and we're continuing to do that. But there's two things, I have two comments I want to make about that, uh, the, the distraction you're commenting on. First, our customers are increasingly wanting the whole solution. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to buy everything from one vendor. Mm -hmm. But it means the vendors that do have in the IP space, they want them to have a technology base that helps them with, with not only their today problem, which is I need this node that has this characteristic, mm -hmm. but maybe as important or more importantly, their long-term problem. And that is, in five years, right. I want to converge these N networks into a much smaller set of networks. Right. Less OSS, stacks, less stack. If they're going to do that, they need a platform that gives them that leverage. Mm -hmm. And so that implies that we need to build a common set of platforms, common set of tools, mm -hmm. common management, and we've done that. Right. So to a degree, we're, we're needing to, to expand mm -hmm. our capabilities to support right. our customers' desires to, to, bring, to use our technology uh, to become more efficient. Right. The second comment I want to make is that we have really used a lot of leverage here. What mm -hmm. we've really done is, is taken our core technology base, mm -hmm. which is SROS, Okay. In, uh, you know, industry tested in 400 service provider networks running some of the most large and complex networks on the planet. We've taken SRS and we've taken our core silicon technology and system mm -hmm. design expertise, so that's the network processor, and we've applied them to the core at a time when the core needs okay. those functions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and when I say the same uh, technology, I'm talking about the same chips. Mm -hmm. And when I say the same SRS, I'm talking about the same binary. Not a marketing, right. you know, PowerPoint, yes, it's SRS. It's literally the same binary. Okay. So you get a tremendous amount of leverage of the technology. Okay. It helps our customers, it helps us. Okay. Um, now, what we always try to do when we talk about product announcement, right. because uh, a lot of this video is distributed to service providers and Wall Street, is when is the product going to ship? Right. I mean, is it, is it something that's going to be a few years from now? What's the time frame on this? Yeah, product? this is product, the, the SRS 20, which is uh, you know, the the flagship product, I guess mm -hmm. they're all the flagship product, they're going to ship in Q3. Q3? So this, this, thing is, this is in our customers today. Okay. This has already been running full configs mm -hmm. in, uh, in certain networks. Wow. Uh, so, and it will ship for revenue in Q3. Mm -hmm. The XRS 40 and the, and the XRS 16C mm -hmm. will follow on and ship in first half of 2013. Right. But the platform is, uh, we're going to demonstrate the XRS 40, the, right. the biggest one. Yeah, the biggest one. At the announcement. Okay. So the platform's up and running, it's going to customers now, it's real now. Yeah. Well, I want to wish you luck, Basil. Thanks Thank so much you, for being on the hot seat. Good to see you. Off the you. hot seat with Basil and Ray Moda. Thank you very much.